Jody and I um, wanted to have a conversation about some of the topics and the issues that came up in the class. Um, we talked a lot about more precise tools for searching information, like Web of Science and Scopus, and we talked about Google Scholar too. Um, but there were some things that came up that Jody and I didn't have time to address, and so we just wanted to talk about it. It's not necessarily useful to add a broad subject term like landscape scape architecture in with the rest of a more specific search. So why wouldn't we put landscape <laughs> architecture in a search? And when I say we, mm -hmm. I mean like as librarians when we're searching, we wouldn't put it in there. So mm -hmm. like why wouldn't you put landscape architecture into a search? Well, because you just don't know how the people who created that database chose to focus on the subject. And so if you add something like landscape architecture, or another kind of broad phrase like that that encompasses your category, that may not show up in those references, even though there's some great references that are there that don't have that in there, and you may miss out on a lot of things that may be helpful to you. Is yeah. that your feeling? Yeah, and the way that I think about it is, you know, Web of Science indexes the title, it indexes the authors, it indexes the abstracts, and the keywords of the article. And the keywords is where I would expect to find landscape architecture, but it might, it's like what you were saying, like if they might have not put landscape architecture in the keywords. So if landscape architecture, the phrase, or either of those words isn't in the abstract of the article and it's not in the keywords, it's not gonna come up in your search. Even if it is a landscape architecture article, if it's not in somewhere in that record, that phrase, then it's not going to come up. Sometimes more specific things are, as we talked about when we met with you all, that's a lot of the iterative process that you go through too as you're doing the search. Like, okay, I have this here and there's a lot less than I would have expected to find on this. What's going on? Why am I not getting it? And looking to see what you have and playing around with it, trying some different things to see what actually works or doesn't work for um, a search. We do that all the time. Yeah, it's just uh, it's putting something in and then seeing what you get and then trying something else and trying something else and then kind of like cobbling together a search from all the different successful ways we got some stuff. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, not as, as simple as you might think sometimes. I understand exactly what I'm asking for, but the words that you use may not be the words that somebody else used to describe it or somebody in a different field might describe it. It makes total sense in the field of landscape architecture, but you might miss out on things that are being done in some other area that they use another term for. Yeah, totally. I didn't even think about that, that mm -hmm. if... If there's, um, you know, if there's something like your topic sort of intersects different disciplines and you use landscape architecture in the search, but there's something published outside of landscape architecture, then you're going to be missing that too. And landscape architecture is just, a, you know, it's such an interdisciplinary subject area that you really want to give yourself the possibility of finding some of those articles that might not specifically address it as a landscape architecture topic. So another thing that we were talking about was how using specific terms got a lot of results that you hope to see, but then when you tried a more general search, there wasn't as much that came up. And maybe it's not that there's no results, but maybe there's no useful results. I would probably start with Google Scholar. Their algorithm is really good at surfacing different um, resources that Web of Science, a very literal search, wouldn't necessarily do. And I would really pay close attention. It's almost like being a detective and looking at like very subtle things in the title. What language are they using in the title? In the abstract, what language are they using in the abstract? The people who are writing about your topic are using some kind of vocabulary, and maybe it's different vocabularies. There might be more than one discipline um, in the area that you're looking at. Um, and so once I have that vocabulary, then I go back to Web of Science and I start using that vocabulary. If I have a bunch of search terms, I wouldn't like dump them all into Web of Science at once. I might try like one phrase and see what I get, and try a different phrase and see what I get, um, and then kind of put together the most useful ones. Yeah, and that's where you know looking to see what kinds of subject terms are assigned to different articles might help you, and then just the techniques that we talked about in terms of citation searching. That's one of the great ways to get around the vocabulary challenges sometimes and to find things that, you know, maybe talk about things that you're interested in but maybe aren't listed as having the same subject terms or aren't described in the same way. 
Yeah, I really like to think of that as like a detour. Yeah. Like if I don't understand the field, then the references understand the field. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Well, and that's where I always feel like, you know, if you can just get one good article, you can do so much. And it's like, so, you know, starting the process and looking for that one good article really gives you an, you know, leg in or a, an opportunity to kind of step into that field and find out how people really are talking about it, what they, how they look at it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the topics that came up um, was about skate parks. This could be many different things. The way I want to think about it is like city topics. When we put skate parks in Web of Science, not much came up. I think there were like three things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And afterward, it kind of occurred to us that some of the information that you might need would be from municipal sources or from sources outside of Web of Science that maybe it would be not necessarily scholarly um, sources that would be indexed in Web of Science. I, I go back to my early days working as a librarian and think, you know, who cares about this? What fields, what areas are interested in this? And how do they publish? What do they, you know, like a government entity doesn't do a whole lot of peer-reviewed articles. You know, someone working in a business often doesn't do a whole lot of peer-reviewed articles. You know, and you just kind of have to start thinking about if if I was interested in this topic or if someone's interested in this topic, what do they do for a living and how do they communicate it with other people? For for city issues, like skate parks are like, I don't know, I mean there's lots of different things, community gardens or dealing with rivers or lakes or, um, you know, you might interface with uh, the Department of Natural Resources or, you know, the city of Minneapolis or um, these other entities that do research around the topic and they publish research around the topic but they would publish it as reports, probably, on mm -hmm. their websites. So that might be where you need to find some of that research, in addition to the sources that you would find in places like Web of Science. No, and government publications are its own whole big area, and it's not usually showing up in the typical databases. There are sometimes they have databases, sometimes they just kind of have to say, yeah, I'm really interested in skate parks in the city of Minneapolis. I wonder what the city of Minneapolis, you know, publishes in this area, or the state of Minnesota that might be relevant to the city of Minneapolis. It's maybe it's, maybe it's trying to find a municipality that's really good at communicating their information. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, yeah, trying to yeah, track it down. And that's totally not my area, but we do have a government information librarian mm -hmm. whose name is Alicia Kubis, and Alicia specializes in how government information is structured and organized and communicated, both online and published in print. So. I'll put her email on this. <laughs> get in touch with us or get in touch um, with Deborah. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know, I had a lot of fun in the mm -hmm. class. So yeah, it was a good conversation.